2492 in September of 2018 for construction of a proposed duplex, as this property is adjacent to a ditch that is empirically connected to fish bearing waters. DP 492 established a five meter setback from the ditch along the northern property line, which exceeds the required 4.57 meter exterior side yard setback in the RS2 zone. DP 492 requires the protection of 13 mature trees during development. Variances to section 8.6 of the zoning bylaw are requested to allow for two separate landings and their associated roof overhangs to project into the rear and side yard setbacks. Each landing would be used to provide access to the duplex units. The lot has a unique shape and the required five meter environmental setback along the northern property line limits options for providing access to the units. DVP number 148 proposes to vary the interior side yard setback from 2.13 meters, seven feet, to 1.26 meters, 4.13 feet and the rear yard setback from 7.62 meters, 25 feet, to 6.58 meters, 21.58 feet. As the variances are only being requested for small portions of the building that will, be, that will provide access and egress, there should be minimal impact on the neighboring properties. Given the unique shape of the lot and the increased exterior side setback associated with the ditch, staff support the variance requests. This slide shows a rendering of the proposed duplex with the landings and overhang requiring variances highlighted. Legislated and district processes for engagement were followed for this application. Notifications were mailed and hand delivered to properties within 100 meters. One comment that did not support the variance has been received. <coughs> Staff recommend that the District of Squamish authorize the issuance of development variance permit number 148 as presented. That concludes my presentation. Any questions? Thank you. I'll just read uh, um, a statement here for the, the occasion. The proponent and members of the public will be given the opportunity to be heard or to present written submissions respecting the following requested variances to section 8.6, minimum setbacks for principal buildings of the District of Squamish Zoning Bylaw. They are interior size setback from 2.13 meters to 1.26 meters and rear setback from 7.62 meters to 6.58 meters. I will first go to council in case they may have any questions for staff uh, and then there will be opportunity for the public including the proponent. Uh, please raise your hand if you would like to speak to these various requests and after I've confirmed that it is your turn to speak Please approach the podium and commence your remarks by clearly stating your name and address. Please note the speakers will be given a maximum of five minutes to address council. Firstly, to council, are there any questions regarding this development permit variance? Then to, oh, excuse me, Councillor Stoner? Yeah, just a quick question on, I'm just trying to pull up the actual imagery here. Um, the setback on the interior, I think it's, I can't remember which side it is, but one of the two. So there's the driveway on the left-hand side of this image. Mm -hmm. um, what is the height of the proposed entryway that is going to butt into the driveway? I believe it is roughly 15 feet. It, it's about one story. So okay. this, or this would be better. And there aren't any concerns with that impacting access for the driveway? Uh, the landing is going to come down off of the driveway, but there should be adequate clearance to, to allow the vehicle to still enter the garage. Thank you. Other questions? Councillor Herbert? Yeah, um, thank you. The, 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 other, the other piece of that, that, land, that uh, landing on the second floor at the back, um, yeah. could that not be accommodated by taking up a little bit of interior space and maybe some deck space from the front to keep the, the square footage the same and if there's been discussion around that so we're not varying on multiple sides of the same project? Uh, there was not much discussion about that. This is what was proposed to staff and staff felt it was a reasonable request given that the building is being pushed closer to this interior side yard setback. Um, because of the increased setback associated with the, the northern property line. This, this setback is the southern property line, so there's a larger setback required along the north due to the environmental setback, and it is a, a, a very small uh, production. Any further questions? <clears throat> Councillor Stoner? Yeah, 
And I'll give opportunity for the proponent, if the proponent may be here this evening to speak. Um, please. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good, thank you. All right, then. Any other members of the public wishing to speak to this development permit variance? Again, any other member of the public here that wishes to speak to this development permit variance? And for the third time, any other members of the public here wishing to speak? Thank you. Um, do I have a motion, or could I have a motion, please, uh, to adopt the staff recommendation? And that recommendation is that the District of Squamish authorize the issuance of development variance permit number 148 as presented for property legally described as Lot 9, Block 6, District Lot 486, Plan 3960, and located at 380 Avenue, Squamish. And that the Mayor and Corporate Officer be authorized to execute the Development Various Permit Number 148. Do I have a mover? So, Councillor French? Councillor Race, a seconder? Any further discussion? Yeah, I think I'm um, happy to support this. I think this is what the variance process is about and what it's for. When you have these, sometimes we have lots that are challenged by topog topography, rock faces, and so forth. And, other times by odd shapes, and, and this is one of them. The impact to the neighborhood uh, is minimal, if at all. Uh, I'm so happy to support it. I think this is a good, good subject for variance. Being acquainted with the site myself, I have to concur, concur with uh, Councillor Race. I think that uh, this is a challenging site, but that the initiatives being proposed here will uh, serve to uh, uh, improve circumstances in the area with respect to maintenance. It's a popular trail nearby, and uh, sometimes this snow that's in question here for the setbacks can, uh, could be better maintained and perhaps hopefully will be in the future. Then, um, shall we go to a vote? Uh, uh, if I could have uh, uh, all those in favor of this uh, motion? Any opposed? Carry you know. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we have two bylaws up for adoption. First of all, uh, District Established Housing Agreement Bylaw Development Permit 482 at 37762 Third Avenue, bylaw number 2667-2019. The staff recommendation is that this uh, District of Squamish Housing Agreement bylaw uh, DB 482 Third Avenue be adopted. If I could have a motion. Councillor Race. Councillor Stoner seconds. Any discussion? Uh, seeing none, then I'll, I'll call for a vote. Um, all in favor? Carry. The second bylaw for adoption is the Squamish Smoke Less Park Committee Establishment Bylaw number 1935-2006, Amendment Bylaw number 2662-2019. The staff recommendation that the District of Squamish Smoke Less Park Committee Establishment Bylaw number 1935-2006 be adopted. If I could have a, uh, uh, a mover for this resolution. Councillor Stoner. And a seconder, Councillor Race. Any discussion? Uh, as we recall from previous uh, meetings, there's really two uh, rationales for this bylaw. Um, one is uh, in response to community interest and concern in the form of letters received from stakeholders, but the other is also that uh, uh, the increase in numbers uh, of uh, members of this advisory committee will help us achieve quorum more regularly. So any further discussion, then I'll do call for a, uh, um, a vote. All in favor? Thank you. One opposed? Carried unanimously. I will move to staff reports. And um, we have sector ecosystem recommendations. That is our economic development department, a presentation from Kate Mulligan. And the staff recommendation will be that the District of Squamish proceed with the development of a comprehensive sector plan premised on the proposed sector ecosystem presented in the report to council, which we received before us. So we'll have a presentation on it. Please, Ms. 
calling it. Thank you, Deputy Mayor and Council. I have a bit of a frog in my throat because I'm sick with a cold, so please bear with me. I won't be speaking as loud as I normally do. Um, so I'm here today um, with the objective to have Council confirm sectors to be included in the District's 2019 Comprehensive Sector and Foreign Direct Investment Plan. Uh, to provide an overview of what this plan entails, we received funding through Invest um, in Canada Community Initiative uh, for 2019 in the to uh, total of $25,000. But as a funding requirement for uh, the development of this plan, um, it must be investment focused um, and focus on foreign direct investment attraction, um, retention, or expansion. Qualified sectors for this study include digital media, environmental technologies, renewable energy technologies. And we must also focus uh, within the work that we're doing on um, the US and China as potential markets for sector development. The total project cost, um, as I mentioned, is uh, 25,000 from the Invest in Canada Community initiative and a matching 25,000 um, proposed uh, with this, this year's budget. The federal funding um, is contingent on these matching funds from the district. Uh, we must complete this report in 2019. It's a requirement of the funding. And um, we uh, are using a third party firm, which is a condition of the funding as well. Um, we also propose um, an industry represented working group to help complete this plan. Uh, we do have an existing group, part of our Squamish Economic Steering Group, which is called the Future Forward Group that has helped us with our work for the sector strategy thus far. So we propose expanding that to make it much more of a task force for the purpose of completion of this report. The sector plan is going to cover our existing ecosystem with in-depth profiles of the sectors that we will be analyzing. It will be looking at competencies, so such as investment readiness, workforce assets, infrastructure assets, value chains, policy, policy and regulatory frameworks, um, and existing investment into um, the sectors that we're looking at. Um, it's going to look um, for opportunities as well, in particular um, performing a leakage analysis, um, infrastructure incentives that are available uh, through federal and provincial funding, um, R&D and innovation capacity that may prove an opportunity, as well as um, what recruitment zones uh, we would want to focus on, in particular within the United States or within China. Um, We'll also be uncovering barriers and challenges to growth of these sectors, uh, which include economic, policy, regulatory, perhaps land and space barriers, competition, etc. From there, once we have a good understanding of these sectors, we will be creating a forward plan. And the forward plan is really our desired outcome. So what does the roadmap look like with specific actions and timelines? What does the partnership framework look like and resourcing requirements in order to support um, the growth of sectors? In addition, while we're doing this, the goal will be to create tools and communication products so that we can actually use the content right away um, and start sharing this with our local sectors, using it for perhaps policy development with provincial and federal government and for funding applications and grants and so on. So this was proposed on February 12th during Committee of the Whole. It's the proposed ecosystem that we're using to base the work that we'd like to complete in 2019. This stems from work that we um, undertook in 2018 to understand what opportunity um, exists for various sectors of our economy. Through that process, um, we looked at traded sectors in particular. So sectors, while they're very strong, such as healthcare and social and public services and construction, um, we decided to focus primarily on traded sectors so they're not included as part of the sector ecosystem. 
we have two cat or three categories essentially of um, sectors. We've lumped core and enabling sectors together because in some cases they can be core and enabling. And those include education, high tech, creative industries, transportation, tourism, and forestry. And through this work that we did in 2018, we uncovered um, two emerging target themes, the green economy and outdoor recreation. And those are made up of subsets of the sectors that you find in core and enabling sectors. And um, the themes themselves um, are not necessarily how we would forward brand um, when we're trying to, uh, to work with industry or get them to understand what our focus is. It's a way of us grouping them together for our analysis purposes. And once we get through the process of developing, developing the, the actual sector plan, we will then have a marketing and promotional plan and also a positioning statement for the sectors we're trying to attract. And just to refresh your memory in terms of what was included in the green economy and outdoor recreation. For the green economy, it included green building, um, it included efficient technologies, construction technologies, agri-food, and um, um, waste to alternative energy and renewables. Uh, for outdoor recreation, it includes clean-based media, uh, digital entertainment, and film recreation technology, and performance apparel design. Um, from Committee of the Whole and our Squamish Economic Steering Group, Future Forward Working Group, and also um, the Squamish Chamber uh, Policy Committee, we, um, we received uh, feedback, which has been fantastic, which is going to help us address the plan as we move forward um, in terms of in terms of development. So the, um, the, question, the questions were um, focused on how we're going to address the development of the plan in particular and what was going to be included in it and then what sectors could also be um, considered uh, within the sector development plan themselves. So this is just to summarize what the general feedback was. Um, there was a request that um, we consider transformative technology. Um, it's a growing sector of importance, and um, we will be considering that as part of our recreation technology um, sector plan development. The other question was how manufacturing will be considered within the identified sectors as opposed to being a sector onto its own. Manufacturing is incredibly broad and um, Squamish would benefit from having a more specific um, focus in terms of its manufacturing ecosystem. Um, so for manufacturing, uh, we are considering that within green building and food and beverage manufacturing. Most of the appar performance apparel is actually design based. For the industry composition, um, one of the questions was, uh, or was <coughs> the industry composition of sectors should be clearly defined. Um, all of the industry co composition of sectors, so the sectors that have been shared as part of this presentation, are defined by the North American Industry Classification System, or otherwise known as NAICS. Um, so all the work that we're doing lines up to our NAICS codes, as well as NOx codes. Um, in some cases, uh, the NAICS codes don't reflect, and this was actually a conversation last week during another workshop, the NAICS codes don't actually accurately reflect um, certain sectors that um, are dynamic and changing, such as the tech sector, so we'll be using best practices to make sure that we're capturing um, the right sectors and also the right national occupation codes within that when we're doing analysis. Um, creative industries and technology are broad sectors. How are we defining these for Squamish? Um, and so within the core and enabling sectors, creative industries and technology have been outlined as enabling sectors. Um, so there's a role that, in general, creative industries and technology can play in propelling other sectors forward. Um, within our target th themes specifically, that's where we're going to be focusing in on theme-based media, um, design, um, in particular for um, recreation technology and apparel, um, as well as um, for the enabling, uh, enabling the green economy, so efficient technologies, um, construction technologies, and so on, and clean technologies. 
So this was really about how are we going to actually implement the plan or address different aspects um, or considerations within the plan. Um, so one of the questions that came back was how will the district implement um, considering the broad scope? So this is really a refinement process at this point. What we've done is we've said here are a whole bunch of opportunities and from there what we're going to do is we're going to look at um, prioritizing those opportunities and we're going to be looking at it from a perspective of the complexity of implementing um, uh, implementing actions as well as the value of implementing actions and then making a determination of uh, whether or not Squamish um, can actually uh, fulfill on those actions so our goal is to be able to, to refine and target. At the end of the day, the plan that we're developing will have uh, short-term to long-term um, actions. And within those, um, uh, we will be um, basically prioritizing uh, in, in order um, what we should be tackling first. And that may mean that we place a, a certain focus on a particular industry or sector um, to begin with and then expand upon that um, as we have more resources. Um, and in terms of how the plan will address access to land, talent, regional development, and council strategic objectives, that's the purpose of the plan. So the purpose is to take a sector and to be able to really understand the mechanics of that sector. And then through there, uh, through that process, then um, look for opportunities and challenges that we can address. Um, and then I did touch on, um, will businesses understand what the green economy and outdoor recreation mean? Um, again, that's just a grouping exercise for us and we will uh, work to, to make sure that whatever positioning um, we are, are um, that we're confident that it's the right positioning for a communication. Um, and then can, last one actually came from Mayor Elliott was consideration should be given to the circular economy. And um, I think that this will be um, part of that process in terms of defining who we are, um, taking the sectors that have shown great opportunity and determining whether or not defining them within a, a circular economy framework makes the most sense as we move forward. So um, we're going to address that um, as we move forward with the plan. So finally, the recommendation is that the District of Swamish proceed with the development of a comprehensive sector plan premised on the proposed sector ecosystem presented in the report to Council on March 19th, 2019. So thank you very much. Thank you. Any questions from Council at this point? Councilor Cunningham? Yeah, um, on your first slide, uh, you mentioned a, a grant, I think. That's right. Um, now, uh, maybe I didn't fully understand, but it seemed to me that it covered a... It, did it cover only a subset of our sectors? Or it, it's... So the grant itself um, must focus on those two... Um, those two regions and in order for us to apply for the grant it had we had to pick sectors that fit within the framework of the funding so the plan is to use those three sectors to fulfill on that plan and so sorry so then because i think we have sectors in our ecosystem that are outside of that That's so right. we'll use other funding to cover those ones well, at this point, at, at this point, the, the proposal within the actual plan was to focus on education and tourism as core sectors, but fitting those within the definition so we can actually meet um, ICCI's request, and then also those two themes of green economy and, um, sorry, outdoor recreation. And then within the report, um, it just specified that um, the other sectors would be considerations within those sectors. So um, the wording is basically that um, creative industries, technology, transportation, and forestry and wood products are to be considered as part of core emerging sector plan development. Considerations for branding, positioning, and promotion of these sectors will be the outcome of the plan. Councillor Stone? Um, so to clarify on that a little bit more, so we have six sectors and two target themes that are identified in That's the analysis right. that we have. Moving forward with the comprehensive sector plan, is that going to be 
specific to a subset of those sectors, or is it intended to cover all? So the the actual um, sector plan is going to cover um, tourism and education, and then those other subsectors um, that I just I, the paragraph I just uh, read, and then emerging themes. So the two themes that were outlined. So not um, not including. Um, uh, like overall forestry, not including overall creative industries, not including overall type high tech, but within um, within our, our themes, our emerging themes. So it's more specific. Any other questions? I have a couple myself. Sure. Uh, first of all, you mentioned uh, your emphasis on defining these sectors, making them clear how they are relevant for Squamish. One of the sec sectors that's described in the background material in your report is natural resources exploration and technologies. And in uh, another uh, table of the report, it's identified as being uh, not notable or uh, it, it's, it's a little bit, uh, well, my suggestion is that perhaps it, it needs some help as to describe its uh, account for its relevance here. And I would suggest that it has some relevance in that Squamish is a shipping point for natural resources and indeed the oil and gas industry, uh, Wood River LG being one example. And uh, another one that occurs to me is that uh, the inbound steel at Squamish terminals is to a large extent destined for interior natural resource sectors. And there has over the years been the concept of doing more fabrication of that steel here in Squamish. My question to you, in the description of that sector, perhaps there may be opportunity to highlight those two roles of Squamish or indeed that opportunity? <coughs> oh. I'm looking at natural resources exploration. <laughs> so yes, you're looking at, there. at this, right? Okay. Yes. And just whether it may be relevant to mention those two roles that Squamish currently has, uh, shipping and bringing in inbound materials for those industries with the potential for uh, further value added here. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, when we looked at Not Notable, that was really focused in on exploration technology companies that are related to natural resources, such as mining, as opposed to the, the value chain around it. So, but we could definitely add that in as potential. Sure. Uh, we haven't had an active mine here in a while, but it's going back a few decades, there, there have been some as well. Uh, I do have another question. I'll just pause in case there are many other, other further comments or questions from Council. Councilor Pepego. Well, actually, yeah, I, I saw the, the natural resources section in there, and I read through, and I actually had trouble placing it in the context of our strategic plan and so on, and rereading the report a couple of times. My assumption was that it was sort of one of the things we looked at, and we looked at some of the risks, and, and, and so in the overall analysis, my sense is that it was sort of purposeful that that was not um, determined to be one of our targets. That's right. The, but it doesn't mean that I can't um, just, include it within the profile. Sure. Um, just to elaborate on, on the sector itself within our community. But it's not part of one of the sector recommendations um, under green economy. Any further questions? <coughs> I have a, a question, uh, or perhaps it's a suggestion. I'm looking at the sheet, Local Momentum, where you outline uh, ongoing programs uh, that are uh, alongside the one that you're speaking to this evening, namely the Sector Impact Study and the grant application. And they are Industry Innovation Program, TechDev 101, the session that was here in Council Chambers last week, Accelerator Programming, and Agri-Food Plan. And my question is whether it may be uh, relevant to mention a couple of other ongoing initiatives of the district um, that are part of the package, so to speak. You have referred to the strategic plan of council, which certainly would, might be highlighted in, in the list, but also the marine action strategy mm -hmm. and the employment land strategy. And I'll speak to each of those. You have uh, highlighted in the report uh, Ocean Tech which is, of course, relevant to the marine action strategy and the challenge of finding locations for facilities as the needs may, may, may arise in that connection. Some of the industries may have marine-related needs. And 
with respect to the employment lab strategy, um, we're still in implementation. Of course, there are some short-term and medium-term recommendations there. And some of the employment land uh, strategy recommendations are that are pending or that we're going through as the, over the next time, next period of time that involves Chikai Fan, for example, consultation with Squamish Nation on Squamish Nation lands, and business retention and expansion program. And that item, which is recommendation number 15 in the employment land strategy, almost specifically refers to the zoning bylaw review. So in summary, I wonder whether uh, it may be important if, uh, uh, to highlight these other ongoing things that are very much part of the package of your department's efforts, and that it would be namely the Marine Action Strategy, perhaps zoning by law review, and that there, there will be some focus on the business park and railway yards as well. And uh, maybe that's in, uh, zoning by law slash employment land strategy. I just think that we're doing more than even what you presented. You presented so much already. <laughs> Noted. I um, will add that um, to our to the package overall. Um, the uh, employment land strategy. We're actually in the process of uh, updating for an employment lands inventory and um, an employment lands model, as you know. Um, and so the recommendations are still uh, part of the original report and they're still, um, our, I know planning is still working on those. Uh, I think our last update to council was um, in late 2017, I believe, yes, I and so. I presented in late 2017 um, with the update in terms of where we're at around recommendations in terms of action. So I'll note that for sure. Good point. Further questions or comments? Um, Dr. Schoner? Just curious in terms of so the uh, data analysis that we have was conducted by a third party <coughs> research on investment. Is this going forward? Are we intending on using the same firm or does that go back? It over? goes back to a procurement of full RFP. Yeah. Thank you. But this will be the purpose to issue the RFP. Well, then, may I call for somebody to move the recommendation? that the District of Squamish proceed with the development of a comprehensive <coughs> sector plan as presented, premised on the proposed sector ecosystem uh, in this report to this evening. Um, so, Councillor Kretsch, Councillor Herbert, seconder. And uh, uh, any further discussion? Just want to say thank you for all the work that's been done to date. Um, the amount of information in this report gives us so much more depth of knowledge on where it is that we're trying to go with our economic development. And so um, thank you for all the work to date and looking forward to, to the comprehensive presentation. I'll just take that one step further and also thank um, everybody that was involved in putting this together. It, uh, it's uh, been a long time in process. Some great work has been done. And I acknowledge that great work. And I'm looking forward to what gets produced from here. <coughs> Just take this opportunity to, uh, you know, I'm very pleased with uh, the sectors that have been identified. I think it just sort of naturally aligns very well with the strategic plan that we came up with and it wasn't planned. I think it just kind of worked out that way and I, I think, I hope that shows that we're on the right track. <coughs> Really, on my fellow councillors' sentiment, sentiments, the uh, I was very impressed. With it. It was I learned a lot through the through through the report. I'm really happy with the direction we're going, and I look forward to the outcomes of that Then may I call the question? All in favor? Thank you. None opposed. Carried. Thank you very much for calling. Now we have. Uh, your corporate services, a Smoke Bluff Park Select Committee appointment, and the recommendation that Wesley Steven be appointed to the Smoke Bluff Park Select Committee as a member at large for a two year term beginning December 31st, 2020. Uh, do I have a mover? I will move with the amendment that it's ending December 31st, 2020. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, is there an amendment to what we have in front of us no, here? No, sorry, you said, you said starting. Did I? Excuse me. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> Councillor Stoker. <laughs> and do I have a seconder? Councillor Herford? I'll call the question. All in favor? Seeing none opposed. Carried. Um, so we come to our consent agenda. And um, items appearing on the consent agenda which present a conflict of interest for council members and or any items to be debated or voted against must be removed from the consent agenda and considered separately. Are there any conflicts uh, declared uh, in the, that is, minutes, correspondence, and staff updates? Councillor Pettingham? Uh, is this the opportunity to pull a letter for later? Yes, I'll, I'll ask for that momentarily. And uh, I believe Councillor Herford may perhaps under uh, C1. Yeah, I'd just like to pull uh, item C1 for this session. Should we be pulling that one? Uh, any others to be pulled? Councillor Pettingham? Uh, B7. Uh, B7. That is the letter from Havalka, City Victoria. Yes. Thank you. Those two, Councillor Storm? Uh, B4 and B8. That is B4, <coughs> that from Mr. Blackman, and B8 from uh, BC Games. Is that correct? Yes. Any others? Then could I have a motion that we approve the consent agenda with the exceptions of B4, B7, B8? in the correspondence, and the C1 under staff updates. Councillor Pettingo? And seconder, Councillor Stoner? Thank you. And a call the question, all in favor? Thank you, Terry. Now, late agenda items. We'll address those uh, under, uh, in momentarily, mm -hmm. those items. And late agenda items, public hearing cancellation, um, District of Squamish Zoning Bylaw Number 2200-2011, Amendment Bylaw 60001, Squamish Valley Road, Number 2564-2017. There is a staff recommendation that the public hearing scheduled for April 2nd, 2019, for this Zoning Bylaw Number 2200-2011, uh, amendment by law number 2564-2017 be cancelled. Do I understand that uh, Gary Buxton, Mr. Buxton, will speak to this? Yes, uh, Gary Buxton, General Manager. I can be very brief. Um, Thank you. We have some new information that would be pertinent to the application, so we've discussed that with the applicant, and they've asked us to uh, not proceed with that date. So they haven't withdrawn the application, it's simply on, on hold pending some new information. Postponing. Postponing. Very good. So there is a delay rather than a withdrawal. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, could I then have a motion that uh, we, to the staff recommendation, Councillor French, Secretary, Councillor Race? <coughs> Questions? I just uh, would like to know if we could uh, substitute the word cancelled with postponed in the motion? Um, no, because the hearing is actually set for April 2nd, so we have to cancel that. Okay. And then we'll come back with a new date. Excellent. Further discussion? Then I'll call the question. All in favor? Thank you. I don't see any opposed. Carried. Now we'll return, or we'll uh, deal with these uh, action requested items and then come to our items that we pulled from the, the consent agenda. First of all, uh, we have a letter from uh, MLA Cadure and MLA Skillwell regarding wheelchair parking infrastructure and recommendation that the correspondence received from MLA's Cadure and Skillwell dated February 26, 2019 regarding wheelchair parking infrastructure be referred to the Director of Community Planning to prepare a response for Mayor Elliott. Moved by Councillor Race, seconded by Councillor Stoner. Any discussion, questions? Very good, uh, call the question then, all in favor? And none opposed, thank you, carried. The next item from uh, 
um, MP Pam Goldsmith-Jones regarding Federal Lands Initiative, a staff recommendation that the correspondence from MP Goldsmith-Jones dated February 27, 2019 regarding Federal Lands Initiative be referred to the CAO for consideration. Could I have a mover for this? Councillor French. Seconder, Councillor Stoner. Uh, any questions or discussion? Thank you. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All in favor? And that's carried. And the third item, uh, B major, regarding traffic concerns at 2nd Avenue. The staff recommendation is that the correspondence received from B major dated February 28, 2019, regarding 2nd Avenue, be referred to the Director of Engineering for response. Do we have a mover? Councillor Herford, seconder, Councillor Race. Uh, any questions or discussion? Um, call the question, all in favor? Thank you, Carrie. And finally, in this list here, a letter from, uh, from Pulse regarding RCMP Appreciation Day in D.C. I'll have to refresh my memory on this. Do you have a mover for this recommendation? Okay. Pardon me? Oh, for consideration? Of a recommendation. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll move that um, we send the letter uh, as outlined supporting RCMP Appreciation Day. Councillor oh, French uh, moves that uh, the recommendation that we support count our <coughs> appreciation date. Do you have a seconder? Councillor Herford? And uh, I'll call the question. All in the oh, so I'm sorry. Councillor Pettingill, any questions or a discussion? Yeah, I'm actually um, thinking about voting against this right now. When I, um, I appreciate the sentiment in having visited the RCMP uh, and knowing personally some members um, very much appreciate uh, what the RCMP means to our community, what it does for our community. Um, but there's a, a long history with Canada, colonialism, um, and as, as we try to move towards reconciliation, I think the way we talk about this is really, really important so we don't set ourselves back. And when I research this group, um, it seems very small and very grassroots, and I appreciate their efforts. But I do worry about, um, you know, reading through their Facebook page, I didn't see any attention or discussion of that, which I, I feel may be important. And so um, I'm not sure process-wise what I was thinking, what I would prefer to do, um, and I can maybe get some help here on uh, if I propose an amendment or, or what, but um, to, uh, you know, resolve or acknowledge, formally acknowledge what the RCMP does for our community and what it means to our community right now, but in terms of this particular, uh, endorsing this particular movement and group, I would like to know a little bit more about them and their capacity to address some of those uh, kind of issues so we don't set things back. Thank you. Any further discussion for race? Yeah, the letter refers to February 1st. Um, so I'm not clear whether it's February 1st next year or every February 1st. Um, and, and I don't recognize the group that's sending us this. And what I'm going to suggest is an amendment uh, that we forward it to the RCMP to comment. And I'll move that. Second. And a second, second year, Councillor Stoner. Any discussion, uh, questions regarding that uh, amendment or that motion? Seeing none, uh, uh, are we voting on only the on the amendment at this point? Yes. Yep. Yes. I'll call the question on the amendment on the amended motion. Amendment. All in favor? Thank you. None opposed. Now on the motion as amended. Carried. No. Now on the motion as amended. Now on the motion the, as amended. The main motion. So the main, main motion. motion. Will now read the floor of the letter to the RCMP. Yep. Same as the amendment. Call question. Call right. Then we'll vote on the amended motion. <laughs> I'll call the question. All in favor? Thank you. Carried. Now we have some items that we are going to come back to. Uh, first of all, item B4.
a letter from uh, Mr. Blackman regarding EV charger discussion. Uh, Councillor Schroeder, would you like to speak to this? I'd like to move that this letter get uh, uh, referred to staff to schedule a delegation as requested in the letter. A motion to refer to staff uh, so that the delegation may be scheduled. Do I have a seconder? Have the race. Any further discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Carried. Uh, we'll move to item B7, the letter from M. Havelka, Deputy City Clerk, City of Victoria, regarding AVICC and EDCM resolutions. I'll have to pull this up for myself to refresh my memory. Uh, do I have a mover for this uh, or to, well, to speak to this? Yeah, um, basically, I, I note that these are with regards to UBCM. I understand we'll have a committed the whole uh, closer to UBCM, but we'll discuss what we want to bring forward. So I just wanted to, I'm not sure if it needs a, a motion, but I'll, I'll move that um, we just uh, direct staff to bring this back when we have those UBCM discussions for us to look at these. Okay, a seconder, Councillor Stoner, that this item be uh, referred to staff with a view to having putting it on an agenda for a future meeting when we discuss the uh, UBCM resolutions. And any further discussion uh, or question? All in favor? I'm opposed. Thank you. Carried. And then we move to the letter from A. Noble, President and CEO of the BC Games, regarding Team BC results. The letter outlines that there is a local Squamish participant. Anybody would like to speak to this? Councillor Stoner? I'd like to move that the mayor send a congratulatory letter to the participant in Medalist. Who is it? It doesn't say. We have to. It just says that there's one person from Squamish that got a medal. Who has a second here? Councilor Pettingham. Any discussion, comments? I know that Council Chambers and uh, Municipal Hall generally has uh, a number of acknowledgments to local athletes. It has over the years made a practice of acknowledging these kinds of achievements. So uh, I'll call the question. All in favor? Thank you. Carry. Uh, I can see one, Councillor Herford, we'd like to speak to this one, Squamish Public Library, Provincial Library Grants Report. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'd just like to highlight the work that the, the staff um, do at the, at the library. It's an important part of our community and um, in their branding, I, I love the Defenders of Imagination um, part, um, but they also really represent a safe place um, in, in town, which is, uh, we, need, we need those safe places as uh, all these, um, as we read about horrible events in the, in the news. And um, so I, I really just like to highlight the, the great work that they're, do, that they're doing there um, and um, quickly read off the sign that is posted on their front door in case you hadn't seen it. We welcome people of all sizes all colors, all abilities, all ages, all cultures, all orientations, all genders, all religions, all beliefs, you. And I really believe the Swan Club Library is doing a great job of representing um, uh, our, ourselves to our town and to the world as they come to visit. So just the good work that they're doing there. And um, yeah, that's all I have to say. So thank you very much for the hard work at the library. Thank you, Councillor Herford. Any further comments? Uh, it's another splendid report from the library, um, and they're always welcome and they're always uh, fun to read. Um, always uh, good news, good news reports. We'll move on then to committee minutes and reports. We have uh, recommendations from the March 12th Committee of the Whole meeting uh, concerning, whoops, oh, did I miss one there? Ah, uh, of course. Thank you. So we do have business arising from the minutes. And Namely, uh, the uh, uh, proposed resolution drafted by Councillor Pettingill for the Lower Mainland uh, Gov Local Government Association. And um, I'll turn it over to you, Councillor Pettingill, to outline your latest draft of this proposed resolution. Sir, sure. so uh, we did discuss this. I brought this uh, late in the day to the Committee of the Whole last week. Um, I, I think I got all the uh, amendments and suggestions 
uh, from everyone on Tuesday, and then Mayor Elliott gave me some further suggestions on Friday, which I incorporated. So I believe this reflects everyone's input, and I would uh, hope to have your support uh, with this resolution amongst the others. Any questions or, or comments uh, regarding the proposed resolution? Councillor Storm? Um, I will be supportive of this. I think that um, you did a really great job at uh, narrowing down the focus of it, and I think it's a really strong resolution, and it's uh, really important to bring forward this topic. So thanks for that. Any yeah, further other comments? I have a couple of observations. Um, under the whereas is item number F, uh, and I don't know what the common practice is, I'm more used to the BC Chamber Resolutions process, uh, but I wonder whether under, whether there's a, in a final version or in a backgrounder that I understand we'll be producing as well for the discussion at the Lower Mainland Local Government Association event, is whether there might be a footnote here. Uh, BC's carbon pollution has increased in four of the last five years, and the province eliminated its 2020 reduction target because it was on track to miss it by a wide margin. I wondered whether sometimes uh, 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 statements like this might be, it might be useful to refer to a report or a background report uh, supporting that uh, statement, background information. Just uh, a suggestion. Uh, and you will likely, Councillor Petting will have that report handy. Um, I understand that these resolutions, when we do present them, we'll, we'll need to do a little bit more work in terms of background material, ready to answer questions. Um, I have a second uh, uh, observation in the same paragraph under F, where it states, the world is currently on track for more than three degrees Celsius of a warming based on policies currently in place I wonder whether really it's both policies and practices, human practices, if you like. And I'm not suggesting an amendment, but it's just an observation that I had. We're not only speaking about government policies, but our way of life, so to speak. And finally, I'm going to support this because um, the, uh, an earlier version contained a reference to subsidies. And I just think that's a very tricky subject, as we all recognize. And uh, because they are applied in any number of ways towards the things we like to discourage as well as the things we like to encourage. And uh, so in the form that it's in, I'll certainly be giving it my support. Any further comments or questions? Then I'll uh, call for somebody to move that we adopt this or uh, endorse this resolution for a local government, uh, Lower Mainland Local Government Association. Moved by Councillor Pettingill, seconded by Councillor race and I'll call the question are all in favor thank you Carrie now we'll move on to uh, committee minutes and reports and the recommendation from the March 12th committee of the whole financial planning meeting that the yearly council conference budget for councillors be increased by $1,000 for a total budget allocation of $5,000 per councillor I take it we'll, we'll uh, pass these individually, these minute uh, recommendation items. So, do I have a, a mover for that, uh, Councillor Race, and a seconder? Councillor Pettingill, any discussion, questions? Thank you. Um, and I spoke to this uh, when I was at the Committee of the Whole stage, uh, and it was pointed out uh, in discussion in the report we received, I think from the Mayor, actually, if I recall. Um, that this present budget isn't enough to go to both uh, UBCM and I think one other. Um, and so given that, that the costs for these conferences do rise over time, and it's been a number of years since we have increased it, and also too, I think uh, what I see as maybe a trend, or more of a trend for us to um, reach out a little bit to other jurisdictions and other areas for partly to get information and partly to give information. I think there's a number of areas where we're kind of on the leading edge and, and we may be able to help uh, other communities. So for me, it seemed appropriate to raise that budget. It, of course, doesn't get spent unless there's some good purpose for it. And we may uh, have the option of uh, moving it around between councillors if one was going to spend less than others and others wanted to take advantage of an opportunity. So we have that flexibility as well. But all in all, I thought it was time uh, to increase the budget to allow 
more outreach. Thank you, Councillor Race. Any other comments, Councillor Stoner? Um, I agree with Councillor Race that it is important to increase the budget for these things. Um, the costs have increased over time, and there is a lot of important sharing and, and lessons learned that happen at these sorts of events and conferences. Um, as was discussed at the Committee of the Whole, um, whether it be $500 or $1,000 per counselor, I think um, I still am leaning on the idea that this should really be $500 per counselor, at least for this first year. And we could revisit um, with the idea that that additional bit of money could be shared amongst counselors. So I'll be voting against this particular motion, um, but appreciate the sentiment of, of where we're going. Thank you. Councilor Yeah, I'll be supporting the motion, and uh, I certainly um, hear what Councilor Stoner has said and the comments of the mayor um, when we discussed this initially. Uh, their thoughts being that maybe this is richer than it needs to be, and I'll reiterate uh, what Councilor Race pointed out, that uh, we don't necessarily all have to spend this amount, so... Uh, there could well be some surplus at the end of this year if we don't all use our budget allocations. And as someone who is not anticipating to do a lot of travel to conference just because of uh, the work that I do and needing to stay close to home, um, I would certainly be prepared to share my unallocated uh, budget amount if there are any counselors who uh, are um, traveling such that they'll be over their budget. Oh, and one more point, um, I would like us to reevaluate these budget figures for next year. Uh, and if we agree that um, the budget amounts are higher than they need to be, we could scale back. Yeah, thank you. Um, during the discussion of the Committee of the Whole, I believe the, uh, the last time that this was adjusted was nearly a decade ago. So I'll be supporting the, the, the motion as, as it is. And, um, but, Knowing that next year we, when we come into process, we can, um, we can always uh, adjust it back if, if, uh, if need be. And I appreciate the sentiment that everyone um, here has been has been great great to work with and moving this budget allocation around. But that may not always be the case for all councils as well. So I think having the freedom for an individual councilor to go and pursue the, uh, the knowledge and, and the interests of the they deem important without having to have um, consent of the other councillors is an uh, is important part of the um, democracy here. So um, be supporting it to a thousand. Thank you. Uh, as for myself, I, I'm going to be supporting this motion. And uh, as a first year councillor, I have only taken part in one out of town conference uh, with a number of the rest of, of, of council members, and that was the Local Government Leadership Academy event in Richmond. And I found that um, there were certain sessions there that were just, in, I felt, invaluable for me as a, as a first time on council, uh, very uh, valuable uh, guidance and orientation. And um, I also respect the fact that uh, we will perhaps revisit this or can revisit this. And um, we, I think we're all in agreement that uh, we're going to pool and, and manage this, uh, these budgets strategically. I'll call the question then. Uh, all in favor of this uh, motion to uh, um, to adjust the budget for councillors to five thousand dollars per year. Councillor French moves, and the seconder, Councillor Herbert. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <yeah. laughs> then I'll call the question. All in favor. And Councillor Stoner opposed. Carried. Thank you. Now we have three resolutions that we have already uh, discussed and, and uh, in Committee of the Whole uh, for resolutions, that is, for the Lower Mainland Local Government Association resolutions process. Uh, first up is BCR <coughs> Properties, uh, the general topic. And I'll just read out the, uh, the final section of the resolution. Therefore, be it resolved that the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure review and amend the mandate of BCR Properties Limited, such that it be directed to dispose of the surplus lands with consideration to local government land needs for critical infrastructure, environmental needs, community recreation, economic development, as well as for social needs such as affordable housing lands at significantly less than fair market value prices. 
do I have a mover that we, uh, Councillor Stoner, and second by Councillor Pettingill. Uh, any discussion on this uh, particular resolution item? Then I'll call the question. All in favor? Uh, thank you. Carried. And the next item, um, <coughs> Councillor Stoner, I see that you may be declared conflict of interest on this one. Councillor Herford. Oh, I, excuse me. <laughs> Councillor Herford. That's quite okay. Yeah, I'm going to declare, uh, declare a, a bias in, in this one on the bus industry, and um, so I'm going to leave you guys to do this one. Let's just step up, please. Thank you very much. I'm getting a little dry in the throat. That's my problem right now. So, moved by Councillor Race, seconded by Councillor Stoner to adopt the Bicycles and Tricycles Provincial Sales Tax Proposed Resolution. And um, any further discussion on this one? Councillor French? Yeah, I, I'll be voting in support of this. It just seems like a no-brainer, and I really hope that this goes beyond our table and uh, becomes reality. Further discussion. The resolution then is uh, be, it for, be it resolved that the province of British Columbia be urged to exempt electric bicycles, pedal assist, from provincial sales tax charges. And I'll call the question. All in favor? Uh, none opposed, so carry. And if we can uh, recruit Councillor Perper back in the room. Thank you. The next proposed resolution item is sustainable funding for BC Search and Rescue. And the resolution uh, is um, therefore be resolved that the Union of BC Municipalities petition the province to work with BC Search and Rescue Association to identify and implement a sustainable funding model. Councillor Stoner, would you uh, move this one, or speak to this one here? I'll just move it. Very good. And a seconder. Councillor Pennington. <coughs> Any discussion? And I'll call the question. All in favor? So moved that we, uh, um, we adopt and endorse this resolution for Lower Mainland Local Government Association. Uh, the next item is. Um, Chair? Oh. Um, my understanding from Mayor Elliott was that uh, uh, the chair of the LMLGA was going to accept our resolutions uh, a little bit late, but was, would accept them tonight. Um, given that she's away, I just want to check it if someone is able or going to move forward these to him. They were actually already sent. Oh, okay. These ones, so just the one that was added tonight. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Pennego. Um, so the next item up is the Transit Services Expansion, uh, September 2019, and fare change options that we have discussed at, at the committee the whole meeting. And the resolution is that the District of Squamish direct staff to work with BC Transit to implement a fare change for September 2019, based on option one for conventional service outlined in this report, with handy dark fares to remain unchanged. And I was going to suggest that we vote on these uh, different components of the resolution individually. If someone would wish to uh, move that uh, part of the resolution. Councillor Race, a seconder. Councillor French. And uh, so all in favor? That one, thank you. Carried. And the next section, that district staff and BC Transit look at the option of providing free summer weekend service starting in 2020 and that information be brought back to Council. We have a mover, Councillor Stoner, seconded by Councillor Herford. All in favour? Thank you. Carry. And that the district incorporate into the next phase of transit planning, access and equity for Squamish Nation Reserves. A mover, Councillor French. Seconder, Councillor Herford. All in favour? 
Thank you. And finally, does the District of Squamish direct staff to work with BC Transit to implement the tw September 2019 transit expansions? If you recall, there were two uh, neighborhoods um, uh, of the, that are subject to that expansion plan proposal. Councillor Stoner moves a seconder. Councillor French, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, we have a Smoke Bus Park Select Committee meeting uh, staff recommendation that the uh, February 28, 28, uh, 2019 Smoke Bus Park Select Committee meeting minutes be received for information. Moved by Councillor French, seconded by Councillor Race. All in favor? Thank you. And the recommendations from the February 28th Smoke Bus Park Select Committee meeting. Uh, for the 2020 budget consideration that the District of Squamish Council consider the immediate placement of temporary washroom facilities in the Smoke Bluffs Park for as long as Council deems reasonable as part of the 2020 budget process. I will move that one. I do have a seconder. Councillor French. And any discussion or questions? Then, Councillor, did I see a question? Or? Yeah, a question. Sir. Um, yes. So, written the report that uh, so this is just for consideration in our budgeting process. This isn't anything to do for this for this summer in the, in the park. Is that correct? Uh, this ask. That is correct. It's more of a proactive initiative on the part of the uh, uh, advisory committee. There, there is definitely some. There are management issues relating to lack of, of washroom facilities in the park, and this is uh, just. A, a proactive measure to plan ahead for and taking the account budget process. Yeah, and, and I understand that need, and I read um, in the minutes we just we just received about the, the need for this, and it says immediate in 2020 in the same sentence. So I wondered if there was a more immediate need that we could address there. What are the implications of this? Something that we could find in a parks budget to help. Uh, Resource that attempt to resource that sooner. I'm not whether really I'm comfortable with this going forward to for consideration in 2020 when we can try to jig something to make it work now. Thank you. We'll have uh, perhaps uh, Mr. Buxton can speak to uh, providing information on this item. Um, the Smoke Bluff Committee has a bit of a, a budget of its own, and there is budget set aside for the. Um, for the park, so we're going to, in a limited way, try and address this in one or two locations this year for a short period of time. They were looking for 2020 to, to have a bit of a more robust approach to that. So we've got money this year to sort of do a bit of a targeted approach and next year sort of a more general approach. Okay, so we can address the immediacy of this through this motion. I just wasn't sure. Yeah, that this one, was one or two locations and more locations next year. So. Yeah, I'm supporting this motion because we have world-class trails here in Squamish. We do not have world-class uh, trailhead facilities, and uh, this is a small step towards uh, getting us a little closer to where I think we need to be and where our visitors expect we should be uh, in the world of amenities that are trailheads. Did I already call for a mover and a second here for this one? Mm -hmm. I have, then uh, I'll call the question. All in favor? Thank you. Carry. And finally, uh, a public art committee meeting <coughs> from March 6th staff recommendation that the March 6th public art committee meeting minutes be received for information. Moved by Councillor French, second by Councillor Grace. Uh, all in favor? Questions? Thank you. Um, we have no in-camera item announcements, to my knowledge, and uh, unscheduled public attendance in case there may be any questions or um, uh, issues coming from members of the public. Um, yeah, actually, uh, I saw the... Up to the, the mic. you got to go to the mic. Just, oh, okay, okay. Oh, yes, yes. 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 Step to the mic, please. And to get your name, and it's Steve Chua with the Scottish newspaper. Thank you. You know me from everything that I've been here. Um, I saw that you guys, uh, well, I don't know if people see you guys, but I saw that there's a cancellation for the Chi Ranch 
public hearing. Does that mean that they're not going for a zoning amendment anymore? Maybe, um, we answered that this afternoon when you emailed. I didn't go. Oh, I didn't see them. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, you must have been out. You were out of the room when we dealt with that. Oh, okay. Yes, so our understanding is a delay rather than a cancellation, and so we'll be seeing the, uh, this item brought back before us in time once they're, they're ready. Cool, thanks. Thank you. Uh, any uh, council or staff announcements? Councilor Crash? Uh, so we heard earlier that uh, we had an athlete that achieved some success at Canada Winter Games, and it's listed as an athlete from Brackendale uh, winning a medal. And just did a quick look. Larissa Black, who lives in Squamish, uh, apparently won a gold medal in uh, biathlon. Now, she's listed as Squamish. Maybe she actually lives in Brackendale. So congratulations to Larissa and any and all other Squamish residents, Sea to Sky area um, athletes, coaches, and supporters who attended the uh, Canada Games of Record. And uh, also, I'd like to acknowledge that uh, the Sea to Sky branch of the SPCA held a very successful Whiskers and Wine fundraising event um, last weekend. And uh, it was held at the West Coast Railway Heritage Park. Uh, I, I don't have fundraising numbers, but there were quite a few people there, more than last year. Everybody had a great time. The band was awesome. And uh, the supporters of uh, the SPCA in our region are looking forward to the opening of their new facility on Industrial Way, and my understanding is that will happen in the next couple of weeks. So exciting times for the SBC as well. Thank you, Councilor Grant. Any other further announcements? Councilor Kuhn? Um, Two things I want to speak to that happened last week. Uh, one was the hosting of the Tech Dev 101 workshop. Um, which was just a really great event overall, brought together a, a handful of folks from, from the technology sectors to try and build out that uh, network and ecosystem a little bit more. It was hosted by the province. Um, there was lots of really good information shared, um, and I think some good relationships were built. Um, so thanks to those who put that on. Um, and then also last Friday, council and um, uh, some of the senior leadership uh, team from the district uh, attended the Squamish Nation Leadership um, Forum that the Squamish Nation invited us to. And uh, that was a really, really fantastic event and just want to say thanks to the Squamish Nation for, for hosting that and giving us the opportunity to start building uh, better relationships with them and other uh, leadership within the, their territory. Thank you, Councillor Stoner. Thank you. Um, on Thursday, I attended uh, at the invitation of the uh, Squamish Watershed Society, a workshop um, to consider um, improvements to the river flow in the Squamish estuary, um, and particularly around the training dike and opening up the training dike. Um, brought together a remarkable group of stakeholders, actually, which included people who were sometimes very hard to get a hold of, uh, such as DFO, the province, and CN Rail, to name a few. Um, and so it was actually very productive, I think. I, I think we'll hear more about this quite soon. Um, it is potentially a very significant and a very, uh, I think, very worthwhile project. Uh, so more to come. Uh, Mayor Elliott was double booked that day, but she did uh, manage to attend for a couple of hours. Very well. And we also had some senior staff there as well, many engineers. I was also uh, uh, with Mayor Elliott uh, attending the TechDev BC session last uh, week with Councillor Stoner. And I have to agree with you, Councillor Stoner, it was a very uh, valuable, uh, worthwhile event, a day long event, uh, but uh, they kept coming at us with uh, modules and more information and more dialogue. And what particularly impressed me was that the two facilitators, our two experts in the technology field, were not from the big city. They were from small town Fernie in the Kootenays. And uh, a number of the examples that they highlighted of relevance to Squamish were all other small towns like Nelson and Boulder and other Bend, Oregon and other little places around the province uh, doing things of interest to us. And, um, uh, I found that in particular very re refreshing. Um, 
I was also in attendance with, with the rest of us at the Squamish Nation thing, and I'll just comment that it appeared, it seemed to me that our Squamish Nation hosts at the Chief uh, Matthias uh, Center in um, Capilano, uh, Homos, Homosin, excuse me, <laughs> I have a, um, a speech impediment right now, temporary hope, but uh, that they enjoyed the event at least as much as we did. And I think we're all looking forward to the next similar gathering with the Squamish Nation and our friends from the Sunshine Coast and the North Shore who also took part in that event. I'll entertain a motion to uh, close, to terminate. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Herford, Councillor French, a seconder. Uh, all in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you very much. <laughs>